like that. Uh, first of all, welcome everyone. And I would like to thank the Polyglot Gathering for hosting us. Thank you for the hospitality, Slovakia, and the gathering organizers and everyone. Um, I'm from Istanbul, basically, and I'm a linguistic designer. Um, I studied in New York, Oxford, and now I'm based in Athens, where I'm, uh, I ha I'm have a master's degree. So I'm a weekend teacher, language teacher, and on the weekend I'm doing designs, and on the week I'm designing content about language learning. On the weekend I'm teaching to some kids that are uh, learning Greek, basically. Um, let's go. <laughs> Welcome again. Um, so, this is how a architect, designer teaches a language. Basically, I use different types of um, stationaries and papers, and I design my own flashcards, and um, so the kids are really motivated because they are seeing something totally different than the regular. A school system. Uh, so it's a bit of a design touch and today we're gonna learn how you can also add this design and motivate yourself with design in language learning. So we'll start with uh, learning what type of a language learner you are. And we'll briefly talk about Design how you learn will we'll fix up a great program for everyone. The program I'm following, so basically I'll suggest that one. We'll talk about all the apps um, and the trends. So basically language apps that we are using from Memrise to Duolingo. Um, how you can choose the right app. Basically for everyone, there's a different combination, I would say. Uh, but you should... It's basically like trying clothes. You need to try different apps until it fits. There, there is no perfect app for one person. You need to use a combination of them. And future of language learning. So how are we going to learn the languages in future? Um, so it's basically... When we go to a gym, we do have a workout plan, let's say. And when you learn languages, when you have a work, not workout plan, a language learning plan, you go further faster and with a partner as well. So if you go to a gym with your friend, you tend to go, uh, you tend to not cheat on your gym program. So I'll, uh, I usually suggest to my students that, um, they follow a program, a really simple from one for the beginning because, you know, you're, at the beginning your muscles are really not strong, so you need to gradually uh, increase the degree of the program. All right, so working at an organized desk or an unorganized desk, you know, it also affects our uh, motivation, um, having uh, refreshments as well, you know, in order to work efficiently, you do need to get your refreshments first so that you don't take a break and get lost. In... Uh, yes. Um, and a weekly plan so that you don't get lost. You know, without a plan, you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to just study French. You know, today, some. It's... That's better. Thank you. All right. Okay, start with writing what motivates you. So, I want you to do this at home. Maybe I'm just too loud, but... <laughs> Anyways. Um, hey. <laughs> yes. Um, anyways, it's okay. I'll speak like this. Um, basically, there are ways to... Uh, find your motivations. There, there, there are two types of motivations and I make my students write their motivation at the first page of their notebook. So, for example, uh, 
I'm teaching Greek, the student is learning Greek, and then I'm asking, what is the reason you want to learn? Usually they come up with no reasons, so I prepared um, 40 different reasons for my students, and they uh, withdraw it from a box, and we stick them on the first page of their notebook, and each time they don't do their homework, we reread the reasons, the motivations that we had in the first place. So, intrinsic motivation and extrinsic, which we'll see with examples. Um, so, let's say I'm learning Spanish because I want to drive to the Spanish coast and swim. This, this is internal. Um, but when you want to pass a class, win a bonus or to promote and that's an external, so that that's not going to stay forever. But this, this is something you want to do, it comes from within. So basically work and personal reasons. Okay, so I've, when I say write down, not just only to your notebook, it can be on a wall, on a piece of paper A4, it can be on a post-it, but just talk to yourself. If um, there's basically space at your home to spread the language learning to your bed, to the, you know everywhere, you can just like leave some marks, and no one will understand. That's the good thing. For example, I'm learning Norwegian. I did write, you know, hurra, lauskrive, and basically no one at home understands me, so they think, you know. I'm just systematically working when I'm writing. Um, oh, I love myself. Basically, I'm writing here. I love myself because I, I keep learning and stuff like this. It can be like really motivational to see it every day when you wake up. Um, don't be afraid. So no one's going to understand, as I said. I, no one understands uh, if it's in a language that they don't speak or they tend to learn as well. So my mom sees me like writing all this stuff and she, she like time to time asks. Um, yep. So, motives. As I said, we write, we, we first set the motives, why we want to learn this language. For example, I want to sing in Spanish while driving to Spain like a lo loca, like crazy. Um, this is a reason. It's not like, oh, I want to promote and my boss wants me to go to this business meeting in Spain and that's why I, I have to learn. Another reason, I want to cook a recipe from Colombia watching uh, YouTube. I, I've done this before. I'm really interested in foreign cuisine and I tend to not find all the recipes that I want and I want to Google them and uh, fix them myself at home, so I tend to do this a lot. <laughs> um, step two, set a day. Um, for me, basically, for example, Mondays are for Japanese. I want to start the week, you know, in, with, with a culture that has more discipline so that it reflects to my work. And my work has nothing to do with languages as well, it's just design. But I do get a, a bit of time to study while I commute to work. Um, so let's read this example. Every Friday I'll study Spanish at noon. All right, so let's say we are studying Spanish every Friday. Um, how we can start our date? You know, we, to remind us, there's like, it can be a gentle reminder that I wear a shirt that I bought from Spain or it, it has a Spanish touch or I wear a perfume that is uh, Spanish, etc. and I have a candle tea, everything on my desk. So th these are like items that, are, that seem, they're not related to language learning, but it's, it's like a whole package. You're designing the way you learn. You're designing your desk. You're motivating yourself with rewards because if there are no rewards involved, you're gonna be like, bah, why am I gonna study Spanish today? It's just really bold. Uh, step three, write that you love yourself because you know 
as you move forward, as you progress in that language, basically you should reward yourself for, for that as well, in case you know the, there are no locals around you to say, oh, your Spanish is much better than before. You know it's better because you have been practicing every Friday, so why not uh, tell yourself, I love myself because I did study again, again this Friday as well. You, you can also go in Spanglish, let's say you're a beginner and you don't even know the word today, you can go like, today, aprendo un poquito más Puerto Rican slang, yo me amo. It's like, I love myself basically, why not? <laughs> This is my plan, so as you guys might know, I studied architecture, then I start to design, help with a few language apps, their interfaces, so I got into, I tried to find the bridge between design and languages and it happened to be designing apps. So I do get only a bit of time when I commute to work and while I commute, I just basically they're online dictionaries, they're my favorites. You, you, you guys might use more game-oriented apps, but I want my information to be right there, right away. So I highly recommend online dictionaries that you guys, you guys might know word reference. It's my best friend, basically, <laughs> word reference. So I, oh, no, we go back, yep. So, one word, two verbs, in word reference, as you type the word, it already gives you examples, and with that you have three faces, phrases, and I copy-paste it to my notes in iPhone, basically. I don't even need a notebook to study. If I, if I want, I can study languages while waiting for, for, for a bus, basically. It's just the will and the motivation that you find. So I basically give, let's say, 10 minutes to this every day to different languages to keep up with them. And one word a day makes uh, 365 words a year. That, that means like in two years you can actually speak, even if your field is not languages like mine. Plan, 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 and design, voila. Uh, okay, so understand what really motivates you. It can be some, something really different. Um, it can be not related to food. Maybe you want to find, a, you want to mix your cuisine with this exotic cuisine and you want to find recipes. So just find it, what it is. Why, why did you start it in the first place? When I attended Japanese, because my, they asked me why I'm interested in Japanese, and I said, I just like matcha. And that was my reason when everyone had really serious reasons, like my husband is Japanese and all that. But these small reasons are, if they come within, they're really strong and they stay with you. Loving matcha can be a stronger reason than being married to a Japanese guy. So, uh, have a plan. So, have a weekly plan, you know. On Friday, just two words. Two verbs, three phrases, that's it. But which day, just set it out. See the bigger picture. Um, so, let's say you went to a language exchange. I usually attend language exchanges in order to keep my languages. Um, and not forget them. Uh, when I make a mistake, it's funny, but I, and I do get shy as a person, I, I get, I blush when I make a mistake, but then I see the bigger picture, the next time I don't do that mistake, I get really happy. So what makes you sad, think that you'll be really happy when you, you know, not make that mistake, because I do remember a few times that I got really happy after I did that mistake and I fixed it after a week, it really made me happy. So think that in future you'll fix it just because you did that mistake today. Second chapter, user interface trends. So linguistic design, you left there using certain app, it's not your fault, but their fault. Don't be harsh on you. We all use, let's say, all these famous apps and on the way we, we're like, oh, I'm not using it anymore. I'm 
I'm not interested in anymore. Uh, don't blame yourself. Blame that. <laughs> keep, keep, keep going. Find another app. Maybe you're bored of it, and you want you you need a combination of them. Uh, basically, it's not your fault. It's their fault. <laughs> um, do our linguistic world is adapting to these ever-evolving trends? So you guys might know that uh, on the web, everything is getting more visual, interactive, and less text. Uh, so th there's, for example, Euro News. You guys m maybe know the brand, the, the newspaper. They <coughs> started to convey their news entirely in video, so what is written down, they actually have it in a video. So necessarily, when I get ready to go to work, I put Euro News on my phone to a side, and I listen to the news. When I'm ready, I'm good to go. So apps are changing. While you do something else, at the same time, you can learn languages. But this will come in future, I, I believe, in all our apps. All right, so let's look into the few apps that you guys might know and might not know. What are the reasons that they chose these uh, funny animals and colors and all that? So somehow there's a trend in the linguistic world that they use like animals. I, I don't know from which one it started, but everyone somehow looked at each other and they copied these animals. But when, let's say, you're a grandma and you want to learn English for the first time and it's your first ever language and you're learning at the age of 80, would, would you really get from this um, animal look that you're looking at a language app or you think it's like a app where you'll play games. You know, it's, it's in between. It has to adapt to all kinds of uh, ages as well. So th that's one. Um, let's look to blue. Blue in the world of uh, design is the most used color because it reflects professionalism. So usually businessmen wear navy blue, blue in order to look that they have it and they know what they're talking about when they don't even know, let's say, but it do it adds on you some sort of prof professionalism. So usually university logos are either blue, either red, like it comes from the color of encyclopedia, basically. These two colors are the colors of education. But when we switch to, the, to green, um, yellow, uh, orange, the, the aim is the aim there is to um, gamify, basically, language learning. It's not to, as, um, let's say, Rosetta Stone or Google Translate, you know, they're trying to keep it more intelligent, more professional, stable, and all that. When we come to green, it's usually green and yellow is preferred by food market. It, food market prefers green, yellow, um, but here we go, we see Spotify and um, Jolingo as well. Yellow, optimistic. So the color yellow makes you hungry and it actually wakes you up and it gets your attention. So that's the reason, you know, McDonald's, uh, Snapchat, Memrise or uh, LingoDA went for it. So they want to get your attention. Um, and it makes you happy as well, as well as hungry. Um, orange. So orange is cheerful, you know, it energizes you. Uh, it do addresses to younger generation as well. So here you go. You have Babel, SoundCloud and word reference there. Um, red. Daring, dramatic, sexy. Um, well, we do not find any language apps here, but, you know, good to learn. Creative, mysterious, luxurious. We, we do have Yahoo here, Wonka, um, Tranquil. Uh, many, many uh, apps do go for, the, the startups, sorry, 
it, they tend to go monochromatic, basically. They, they tend to just like fix the logo and then they decide on, you know, what color to add. So this is a good start. Or this is a good start if there are ones that they have startups. Voila. So, um, top used apps. Um, WhatsApp, Green, Messenger Blue, Instagram, uh, Iridescent, Airbnb Pink. But what's behind their logos? Like, if you were to not see their names, you're, you're seeing these logos for the first time, would you get what, what this app is for? It's for speaking to someone. You, you read it. You read it from the design. You, you read it here as well, and you read that. You, you, you're going to take a picture or put a picture. And let's look at Airbnb as well. So they tried to hear um, somehow corporate a mum or someone hugging a person that has just entered the house. So they try to give that feeling, you know, that hom homely feeling there. Okay, all our apps that we use. So Duolingo, um, as we all might know, they have like this game-ish nice set out. Memrise, they have recently changed their um, logo, I think like a few weeks ago. Um, they had like a few different colors, a palette, turning palette, you guys might not, you might, you guys might have seen it and just it stayed somewhere in the past, but I don't know which logo I like better. The other one symbolized my uh, differences, different cultures, and this one is more like, oh, we are becoming a brand. This is the way I interpret, but I don't know what, what's the design reason behind this. Google. I find this logo to be the most successful here because I can read directly that it's related to languages from here. So, uh, as I said, I'm an aged person and I'm using this for the first time. Okay, I get it. I, it's going to help me with the languages. Babel, they have this um, younger generation friendly logo. Um, it's nice and it has this like mathematical person kind of uh, touch there. I think they also recently changed this. Let's go. Choose the right app. Tailor your own program. So for everyone, I, when I start with my students, I recommend them to download all the apps that they find in that language. All the apps. And it's basically like you try the clothes, you take it off, you don't like it, you're never going to go back. So that, that's good. If you never went back after the first week of downloading all of them, just delete them. But download up to 30. Download, just download. It's, it's free, all of them are free, it's free to try. And then decide on which one you like. Consistency. So if you don't like them, you're not consistent. If you're not consistent, ciao to that language. <laughs> so, um, basically, you need to find what you like first. So these are the tools that we, we used to use before all these apps, all these phones got into our lives. So we used to learn from books, textbooks, dictionaries, and grammar charts, flashcards, CDs that you find with language books. So they come together. You know, but we used to not touch the CDs because, you know, it's not convenient. Flashcards, you lose them or basically use them for the first time. You don't go back. Dictionaries, I still use them. <laughs> Let's use them. Um, but all these apps somehow replace these, but they do not have as much as information they do have or you don't dig in, basically. Um, so, when we go back one slide, from here, we were getting, we were, while reading all these products, tools, we were not getting speaking, writing, yes, listening if, you, if you're at a school system, reading, yes, by yourself. So what you need to focus on is like, um, how is my speaking? It's, it's the four principles, basically, when you need to pass TOEFL, DELE, any language test, you need to 
Test yourself in speaking, writing, listening, reading. So, do these apps respond to all of them? No, not really. So, my, basically I'm going to share with you my uh, system of learning. First of all, for speaking, I attend language exchanges. That's for me essential. And you do see the grammar chart um, app or website called Gator like three times because in my recipe of learning languages, I use it more often than the other ones. But this is my own recipe for myself, basically. Um, word reference. Uh, I actually, I tend to use word reference probably more than conjugator, but somehow I didn't put it. Um, word reference, I use it so much to share, to look for verbs while waiting for my bus or anyone. Lyrics translate, you guys heard of it? You, do you guys use lyrics translate? Anyone? <laughs> we have two people. <laughs> Lyrics translate in uh, on this website. You can use all. You can find different songs, and usually you go to let's say your favorite song from your favorite country, which was a hit. I'm sure everyone has a hit song from their own country. Go on lyrics translate. You're gonna find 20 up to 30 translations of of the songs uh, done by the community. Lyrics translate has also idiom section not just songs, so it's free, you know, the Lyrics Translate is free and I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it's an amazing tool to start uh, from learning with uh, singing songs and translations and stuff. Print it, just print one song and start with it. You'll see how easy it is. Uh, Google Translate, we all use it, I assume. It's essential for me, so it's on top. Um, Wikipedia, Wikipedia. Wikipedia actually has a dictionary. You guys might not know because it doesn't exist for every language, but they do have this nice logo. Uh, you see these like different letters. I frequently use this and I really recommend it because it has examples and it gives me the etymology. For me, etymology is really important to remember a new word or if it's from a really um, long-rooted word, let's say, you know, there are many long words in German and Greek. I tend to search for the etymology, otherwise it doesn't stay with me. Fourth, future of language learning. In our fast-changing world, even the news, are, the, the news is more often conveyed digitally. Let's see. So, th this is basically... Um, the feature of how it will be. So you, you, you'll take tests through, you know, digitalized people and you're gonna speak, read and all that. But until we get there, I'm, I'm gonna show my designs which are bridged now between these holograms. So let's see what I have designed so far. A book. So there's, we have this robot, dog and a a, a girl, so it represents a regular person. It says language can be learned by anyone, you know, uh, even robots. So it's like a, again, it gets your attention with the yellow. It has this professionalism with the blue and this mild color, which is in between of them to make the design more mild. Ah, this is my uh, startup, basically. Um, I have a startup called Greek Turkish Words, and this is my uh, banner basically on Facebook. Polyglot Conference. So, my <coughs> I've been to Iceland and I worked voluntarily as the visual content manager at the conference. So this was a, a mood setter for the visuals basically that I really like that we haven't used though. <laughs> Um, a work for a, a work for memorize this another start of or startup of mine called languages in a ball so here I wanted to design like a game sort of app as well you have uh, basically words 
phrases and idioms. Um, each time you guess the word or you type the word right, it gives you the national drink of the country. Um, there are basically a few national drinks and, you know, for Brazil, it might give you caipirinha, the next time uh, something else. Uh, it goes like that way. Phrases, you have uh, food there, so you try to assemble a table, fork and plates and all that, and once you get forward, you get to eat, basically, if you're good at, that, at the language. Idioms, um, it goes the same way. You have uh, sweets here, so the national sweets of the country, and tests you. You go to a market and you try to bargain with what you have learned. Uh, this is how it looks, looks like, basically, the app. Um, an alphabet. Uh, I represented this alphabet last year in, at the Polyglot Conference. It's an alphabet I designed. Uh, it's for sighted people to understand how blind people uh, feel and what they are reading in daily life. So I have used this um, basically font at a few workshops that I have done. So I, wanted, I want sighted people to relate to blind people. That was the challenge there. Um, so you can find my work on my portfolio on Behance. Behance is a website for designers and many other inspirations as well. If you just type the word that you're looking for, it's like Pinterest, but nicer, <laughs> basically. Um, Greek Turkish words, it's my, uh, another startup of mine, basically, that I really like and I recommend some students that I can't really take anymore uh, to learn from this, basically, Instagram account. Um, my info, languages in the board, Greek text words, and my mail, if you have any questions that might pop up, that might come up uh, later on, just feel free, just write me. Thank you, thank you for listening. <laughs> Um, okay, um, we finished a bit earlier than you thought, so we can take uh, several questions from the audience, maybe. Um, but there's still one at Slido, and it's... Uh, if I'd like to create a new language learning app, could you please help to design it? <laughs> um, yes, obviously. <laughs> um, if not, I can give you a consultation. I did this with a few apps that I can't give their names. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right, so um, we can take several questions now, about like five minutes. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I actually, you can just raise your hand and ask them right away. And just a comment, I, I recently found an app which is called Drops. And yes, I love Drops. Design. And now I recommend it to everybody. Well, it's not advertising, but Drops, I only chose it because of design, because it has no like, ads or something, it's super clean, so because of design, so this is like, your, your topic resonates a lot, because um, it just basically one drop which is falling down from above, and this drop is basically a new word, so, and this is super clean, so maybe you will, yeah, because it was not on um, the picture. I know drops, I yeah. love it, but I didn't want to put it to my presentation in case it goes into advertisement or something. Yeah, uh, but I really, really like it. The design, interface is amazing. Perfect, right? The best interface I have ever seen, yes. Any other questions? Which platform do you use for your apps? Which platform I use? What do you mean? In which platform do you develop your apps? Is it Android or iOS? Or iOS. <laughs> I, I'm not an Android person yet. <laughs> We have another question, I, be, I believe. Um, in your bowl of apps, yeah. there was one grammar table yeah. thing that you had three. Can you tell us what that is? I don't know that one. Yeah. yeah. So. 
grammar is really important, basically. The, um, I, ha I haven't put basically all the websites that I check grammar, but they're like four to five. And it's really important, but I do check them from my phone as well. So it's, it's in your hands, but it's essential not just use apps. It's essential to search for uh, verbs on your free time, basically, because if you know just the present tense from all these apps, language apps, and you don't know the past tense, then you can't really speak. So it's really important to just dig into information just bluntly like that, just, just dig in. <laughs> Yes, a uh, little question. Uh, did you dress blue today to appear more serious? Seriously? <laughs> did I? Did I dress? Blue. 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 <laughs> blue. <laughs> Basically, my wardrobe is just blue and white and red. So, <laughs> but it, it, it's before I learned all this. It, it, it was already like that. I, I wanted to keep with one color and black. When I lived in New York, I was just black, because it's New York. <laughs> Have you taken any online language courses, like pre-recorded video courses, like almost like the ones at lynda.com or Udemy or these sites? Uh, what do you think about uh, the role of design in uh, creating videos for online learning? I highly recommend Linda. Uh, first of all, as you might know, user interface, we call it UI, uh, basically outlook of an app. Y you still can't study this at university, so people in that field, they probably come from graphic design background or any design-related background, right? So what we do is we write on our CV that we have taken a course from Linda, a relative websites, Highly recommended. The perfect step, basically. Thank you. Okay, maybe the last two questions, if you have some. Yes. Uh, so I actually have been like color coding my languages. So when I study like Korean, I have like a teal and Spanish is green. Do you think that would help like with your switching or something to have like mentally associated colors with the language or is that just a crazy idea? <laughs> no, uh, basically you're adding your touch, a touch of design and you're categorizing languages related to that. I do do that do, too. And I go to stationaries, you know, where you can find all these nice things that you can organize, like clips, to hang, you, you know, you can hang it with a rope. You don't need to have that roll, basically, to hang it on your wall. You can go creative, put pictures of yours in Paris next to it, put the new phrase that you learned. It's, it, just design it and make it look good so you'll come back to it. Okay, last question or comment? Okay. Um, ah, yeah. Do you see um, any difference in the perception of the colors and forms um, in the different cultural contexts? So is red everywhere red and perce perceived uh, as that? Um, basically, you have also personal experience with red, I assume, depending on from which culture you come from. Um, I tend to probably wear red because I come from Turkey, so the, the flag of our flag is red, etc., etc. Uh, it really depends how we want to use these colors, but it, as long as it's not really dull, you know, you're gonna go back to it, find a way to design it, find a way to put post-its, find a way even to put like a reward, uh, design it yourself, play with it. It's it, it, it's meant to be fun. Go on this. Uh, lyrics translate, dance to it, dance after you study. It's just plan it. What you like, you like dancing, go to that. You, you don't like dancing, you like food. Buy food of that, of that country. Thank you.